So we've gone through a lot of the signs and the feelings that you might be experiencing if you might be abused, if you might be in an abusive relationship. And the reason I focus on the feelings, while I pride myself on trying to be a logical and emotional person and finding the balance, the hard thing with being abused is that oftentimes we do not have the vocabulary we need to explain what is happening, to understand that we are being abused in order to comprehend that to make the decision to leave. I think it's Shannon Thomas who wrote the book um, Healing from Hidden Abuse, maybe Shannon Thomas, talks about the, the key to someone being abused, leaving their relationship, or even making the choice to stay or to leave, is that person having access to the vocabulary they need to specifically describe their experience. Because if you cannot do that and you can't explain it to anyone else or to yourself, how do you make a decision when you don't even know what's going on? All you know is what you feel. But you can't take those feelings and put them in a logical space. Then you just feel like you're crazy. And so I want to focus on the feelings because I think a lot of people may be coming to this pod or the people who have reached out in my DMs or other ways to ask me this question of, am I being abused? How do I know if I should get a divorce? How do I know if I'm being abused? The reason they're asking is because they maybe don't have access to the vocabulary. They can't describe their situation because it's so confusing. And because when you're being abused, I mean, that's literally the point is to m create a situation when you're in fight or flight, you're in monkey brain. You can't think clearly because you're in this monkey fight or flight brain. It's going to be extra exponentially hard to explain what's going on with you. And if you don't have the education, like a lot of us don't, a lot of us didn't grow up with the education on what truly what a healthy relationship looks like and what an unhealthy relationship looks like. We talk about it in theory, but we never really get down to the specifics, the tangibles. We, we, we're never really shown what that really looks like. And most of us don't really know until we've lived it. So, that's why I focus on the feelings because a lot of you, I imagine, will be coming here because you have these shared feelings and you don't know what to do with them. But you have to do something because it's so strong and you know something's wrong. And so I'm focusing on your gut. Trust your gut. And that's so scary because your partner's probably telling you either overtly or, co or, co or covertly that you shouldn't trust your feelings. But guess what? You know, it's a really empowering study that Lundy Bancroft shared in a book that I'll get to later. Um, you know what the most accurate predictor of intimate partner violence is? It's not a past criminal record. It's not uh, a certain background, a certain living situation, what that person's work history is. None of those things are consistent, accurate predictors of the future of partner's potential intimate violence. You know what the most accurate predictor is? The only one consistent accurate predictor. It is the abuser's partner's intuition as to whether or not that partner will abuse them. Let me say that again. The most accurate, the most accurate predictor of future abuse is your intuition and your gut feeling as to whether or not that partner will escalate physically. The most accurate predictor we have found is that if you think, if you feel that your partner will escalate physically, that's the most precise, accurate predictor we have is a woman's intuition. How empowering is that? Terrifying. But when you question yourself and go, no, 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 I, I need someone else to tell me that my relationship is abusive to leave. You don't. It doesn't matter what studies you look at. It doesn't matter what that person's history is, what their background is. Your gut feeling is the best predictor. And that should be empowering to you. So as you're going through this and doubting yourself and listening to this and you know, talking with your friends or journaling or whatever it is, trying to figure out what's going on, or maybe you're not talking with anybody, or journaling because you just feel alone, remember, it's, a, it's within you. 
It is within you to decide and acknowledge what's really going on in your relationship. That power is within. You don't need permission from anybody. You don't need per- permission from your sister, your parents. You don't need permission from your partner to determine if they're abusing you. Actually, <laughs> if your partner is determined that they're not abusing you and you determine that they are, that's an even bigger sign that they are abusing you because a partner will never admit that. That's almost never going to happen. And if they do admit that they're abusing you, most likely it's a part of the abuse cycle. It's a part, it's a way to keep you in. Because maybe if they admit that they're abusing you, then you'll think that they'll change. It's not going to happen. Lundy Bancroft did a study that I think only 0.03% of people within batterers programs actually change from the inside out. Their character actually change. It's, it's really rare. So you don't need to determine, is my partner going to change? Is my partner not going to change? You need to determine, is this relationship healthy? Is it feasible long-term? Am I being, am I being abused? Because if you are being abused, it is not healthy long-term. It is not feasible. It is not sustainable. Those are the decisions you need to make. Or those are the decisions I decided to make. You make your own. But that's how I did it. This was a Titan Media Collective production. 